Day five. Welcome back to part three of the epic journey. If you haven't already watched parts one and two, I highly recommend you do so because this video will make a little bit more sense. So far, after four days, I've been to five different states, 21 different stores, and met five different community members. But I still have a ways to go. Since it's on my way out of town, I decided to stop back at the mall that I was at last night um, and see if perhaps it's reopened today. Uh, good news, there's a lot more cars in the parking lot. I drove past the doors that I drove past last night and the signs looked like they had been taken down the, that mentioned the water main break. I have a couple minutes yet before the mall officially opens and therefore the stores inside the mall, but um, it's looking promising. We may still get to just check out some shops here today before I uh, head out of town, see all the other stores that have been recommended to me. I'm very glad I did stop by because not only did I find some stuff at the first stop, but I found a bonus store to check out as well. At this shop, I found one Dark Light Crypt and one copy of Swap Force for the Wii U. This next location, Slackers, was not originally on my list, but the only reason I knew about it and decided to stop was that someone had recommended a different Slackers location to me uh, for later on in this trip, which we'll check out. But I saw one here in this mall uh, while I was walking by and decided to check it out. Here, we actually found a glow-in-dark portal for the Xbox 360. We also picked up a Golden Dragonfire Cannon, along with a legendary Astro Blast, a Winterfest Lobstar, and a Frightful Fiesta, followed by Taekwon Crow and Aurora. So that bonus stop was definitely better than the original reason I was there, but we'll find out if that holds true moving forward. Off to a pretty good start today. Uh, we only visited the shops that I was hoping to visit yesterday. That was a bit of a, su a surprise, but uh, looks like we've hit another bump in the road. Um, my next stop, uh, another recommendation, Grumpy Bob's Emporium. I'm not really sure what to expect with that one, but unfortunately our timing is just a bit off and they are closed this week to give all their employees a uh, break during the summer. Um, I can't really fault them for that. I do that myself in my business. Uh, typically happens in January, not June, but um, I get it. I get it. It's nice to give everybody some time off where nobody has to worry about anything. So, Grumpy Bob's Emporium, you look like a really fun store, but... Uh, I'm not gonna be able to visit this time. Maybe I'll have to come back and see what you have to offer at another time. On to the next one. On to my next location. It is another Slackers. Uh, this one outside of a mall. Well, I guess it's technically in a strip mall, but uh, we'll see if this one is as good as the first one we found.
Here we just picked up one game. We got Imaginators for the Xbox One. They did have some other hard to find games as well, but this is the only one I felt was priced where I could pick it up. Made it to our next location. It's another Slackers, which should be our third and final Slackers of the day, I believe. This one looks to be located in a mall once again, Alton Square Mall. So hopefully their water main is fine and uh, we can check out some Skylanders. Our final Slackers location of this trip did actually have a pretty decent figure selection, but nothing that I really wanted to pick up this time, whether it was because of condition or price or just too common, but that doesn't mean no purchases. I decided to pick up another copy of Imaginators for the Xbox One. I found this portal, a Swap Force portal for the 3DS, which is definitely harder to come by these days and definitely sought after. I, I almost didn't buy it because it's got superchargers for some reason written on the back of it with marker. We're going to have to try to clean that up and see how it goes. Uh, if it doesn't clean up nicely, you'll probably see this at auction at some point. Um, if it does clean up, you'll see it in the shop. And to go along with that portal, I did pick up their copy of Swap Force for the 3DS. Now, normally I don't pick up uh, games that don't have the original case because I can't sell them in the shop, but I was getting the portal already and the game was marked at just $5. So I figured someone might be looking for this, so I'll pick it up and see if I can help someone out. But I think the biggest shock of the day was not a game, not a portal, not a figure, but actually an accessory. It's one that I get questions about quite often. Because if you've ever watched one of my whatnot live streams, you will have seen this in the background. And I often get asked, like, is that for sale? Or how much do you want for that? Well, now we can find out. Or now I can actually sell it. Because we found the Giants Coliseum display. So this is an accessory made by Power A. Surprise, surprise. Um, so it's just this piece here on the side, but it's meant to go with the, the giant's display arena. You see a battle arena sold separately. So you can see all that stuff in action there, but this was apparently only sold at Toys R Us. Got the, uh, uh, only at Toys R Us logo back here printed on the box. And I, I actually haven't opened this up yet. Um, it is, it, it is open, so it's not sealed. Well, I guess I could double check and make sure. Yes, it is actually in there. It's just a nice little display piece um, for Skylanders Giants, theoretically, but that's just when it came out. You can put whatever figures you want on there. And there you have it. Like I said, it holds up to seven figures, which is a weird, weird number. According to the picture, you can put four on the bottom. I guess if they're all Spyro's Adventure figures, if they're small enough, I mean, you could probably fit like... 16 minis on there if you really wanted to we'll be selling that off at some point i'm at my next location and we are back in disc replay slash mega replay territory uh this is one i was gonna say i haven't been to before but as soon as i drove up I'm like this looks very familiar so i'm thinking maybe i have been here maybe it's been a few years um and maybe it was even before i was recording these trips and so maybe that's why i don't remember it as well i i'd have to go back and look at some of the early videos but in any case mega replay peoria illinois let's go see what they have today they had a little area right up front in the store that's titled skylanders central and I, I i very much appreciate that that they take all the skylanders content they have and put it in one location they had a decent selection of games they were fairly priced. They even had two copies of Imaginators for the Switch, but their figure selection was very sparse. Most of the ones that were left had initials written on them, so I'm definitely not buying them for the shop, and they were, they were common anyway, so nothing really for me to buy here. Now on to my final stop of the day, 
And once again, I'm in a new state. Made it to Iowa, Davenport, Iowa. There is a disc replay here just across the border. So I'm gonna check it out before uh, jumping back into Illinois, but uh, here's hoping we can pick something up. It feels like it's been a while since I bought something. Here we just got one game, Spyro's Adventure for the 3DS. But I do wanna talk about this store a little bit because they did have Skylanders figures here. They had a few other games as well, but the figures, in particular in-box figures, were very interesting. Now, I think most of these figures were very overpriced. It's not a price that I would be willing to pay for them, even if I was adding them to my collection. But they were there, and so it is worth noting. But what's even more notable is they had a Lost Imaginate Mines new in box. So that's Robo new in box in the glass case. And it was beautiful. This is the other item that I have not seen in stores in a very, very long time. Honestly, outside of Toys R Us in 2017, I don't know that I've ever seen Robo in stores. So to not only find Robo, but a new in box Robo in a used game store, that was quite an experience. Now, I don't know if it'll still be there if someone has picked it up. I did tweet out about it when I first found it. And so somebody may have picked that up by now, but this, the shop does know that Skylanders do carry some value, especially inbox Skylanders. So it is a shop that might be worth keeping an eye on if you're in the area. Day six. It's the final day of the trip. I am on my way home, but I have one more place that I've been meaning to hit for a long time. Uh, it's actually in Wisconsin, in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, Vanguard Video. It's a place that was recommended to me a long time ago, and I just haven't made my way over to this part of the state in a while. So let's check it out, see if we can find some Skylanders. Um, it's apparently a very unique store, and I, I, I hope that we can find something good. Now, I've done my research, and I've watched some YouTube videos of other folks visiting this shop. So I kind of knew what to expect, but even watching the videos and seeing it in person, it's a completely different experience. This shop, Vanguard Video 2, honestly, I don't know how this shop exists. The fact that no safety inspector has ever come in here and shut them down, or I just no accidents have ever happened and things have fallen over on people, or... The walkways in here are so narrow. There is so much, dare I say, junk in this shop. I I don't know how anyone finds anything. Like, I did see a few Skylanders games here, but I didn't even want to attempt to remove them from the stacks that they were in. Like, I legitimately thought I would cause an avalanche of games. Like, that... I I explored a little bit. They did technically have Skylanders games. They did technically have Skylanders figures. It was all super common stuff. Most of it was broken. Like, I don't think it's worth your time to go to this shop. And and it it, it just no. I th this is the opposite of the exchange. <laughs> If you've seen my videos uh, in part one of this series, when we went to Ohio and the exchange, and they have nice brightly lit stores, clean aisles, everything in cases, nicely organized, nicely priced, like that's the type of store that I want to go to. That's the type of store that I would hope to run one day. And then I come and see this and it's the exact opposite. This is not how you run a store. And I apparently it's been around for a very long time, maybe even passed down through generations. I don't understand how, how it runs as a business. I think what shocked me even more is that there were so many people in the store as well. Like there were at least half a dozen other people shopping in there when I was. And I even talked to some of them and they're like, yeah, he has more stuff in here every time I come. 
which not only means he gets repeat customers, but he's also just constantly accum- accumulating new product for the store. And so I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, for your safety, I am not going to recommend this store. If, if you want to check it out for the novelty of it, by all means, I can't stop you, but I, I would not recommend it. That's the end of the epic journey. Six days, seven states, 29 different stores, and five community members. We did it all, and I'm sure there will be more crazy adventures in the future. I hope you'll join me.